Bravo. Beautiful.
Uh, my name is Ross Martin. I'm with the Plaza Club for Orlando Perez. That's the park that you're in. And welcome to our garden and park. Uh, thank you for the wonderful food for sharing your movements with us. A um, couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, first one, you're probably wondering why I'm carrying this big twiggy sculpture. It's uh, the, the wonderful work of Roderick Romero, who is a, um, a treehouse architect who is working in conjunction with us on a workshop series we're going to have this coming spring, starting probably late winter, early spring, um, where we're going to teach permaculture and other food-related and garden-related um, workshops, producing things like these planters, which are going to help in our restoration effort. Um, you might have noticed that we have a big stump over here. We lost four trees in Hurricane um, Arlene. The, the major one was one of these huge weeping willows, 30-year-old, 30-some-year-old tree. So now we're, we're trying to patch up and restore our garden. And this workshop series will work towards that. The second thing I wanted to mention is another food-related uh, event that's happening this week on Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the White Rabbit on Houston Street. It's a fundraiser for the Soup Kitchen for SAFE, which is the organization um, that the Trinity Lower East Side Lutheran Parish has for a soup kitchen that they run in, the, in their uh, church on 9th and Avenue B. So again, that's 7 o'clock Wednesday at White Rabbit. It's $25, all you can drink. It's a great event, a great cause. So I hope you guys can all be there. Meanwhile, enjoy our garden and um, kudos for your movement and all the good work that you guys are doing. Thanks. Viva La Plaza! <laughs> Viva Occupy! Viva Ross, baby! Yeah. Yeah. So, um, before we start, can we just ask them? Okay. Sure. Can we just ask everyone to sort of move this way to make some space and maybe like move the, the mic in the speaker room? So if you want. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Walker Hancock. Walker Hancock. Do I have uh, your permission to film you and put it on YouTube and yes, the internet? Yes, Okay. And uh, where are you from? I'm from Paris, Kentucky. Wow. Paris, Kentucky. Yes. Okay. And why are you here today? I'm here. I originally came up to go to Young Farmers Conference at Stone Barns. Uh-huh. Where's that? It's in Terrytown. It's okay. about 25 mi sure. miles uh -huh. from here. Um, and then I heard about this rally and I was visiting some friends and some uh -huh. family here in the city. Right. So. And that's why you're here. here. And um, do you have a farm? I'm going to be starting my own farm this winter. You got land? I just found about? out a couple weeks ago that I'm going to be able to lease wow. some land. Wow, excellent. And what are you going to be growing? Um, a lot of different varieties of vegetables. I'm going to have laying hens, raise some broiler hens, um, some turkeys for Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. I want to get bees. Eventually, I want to be able to make small batched artisan cheese and Wonderful. have wow. a lot of friends come and live there and start. That sounds really great. I think I might be your uh, number one disciple there. Oh my god. <laughs> I need a break. But it uh, sounds down. like paradise. I've never been to Kentucky. Bluegrass country. It's but true. Yep. Is, is the soil good down there? It's is it wonderful. rich? It's wonderful. Yeah. It's really Are wonderful. there a lot of people like you down there that want to go back to the land and organic farm and everything? I'm starting to see this trend grow and grow more and everywhere, more everywhere. Right? So. Yeah. People want to be their own bosses, entrepreneurs, and uh, a farm is a business. And, it's, a, it's a real you know, deal. But you have something you produce and you can sell yourself. So, so it's the ultimate in sort of entrepreneurial you know, production, really. That's how this country was founded. It was agricultural. So it's back to the the Jeffersonian roots, <laughs> agriculturally based, you know, citizens. That's it, you know. That's well, great. all power to you, and welcome to New York. And to you, too. And please sign up. I want to keep in contact with you, because that who knows? I may head down to Kentucky someday and look Anytime. you up and see how you're going, you know. And you'll so talk. here's a pan, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank nice you. Thank you. And we look at the need to reclaim our autonomy and our human integrity by being more directly interactive with the places where we live and not so interactive with entertainment mediums. So to disconnect from the delusional matrix and to reconnect with what it is that we really owe our existence to is to start to be outside more and notice where the sun rises and sets. And then as human beings on Earth who recognize that we have a four and a half billion year old inheritance of evolution to cooperate with when we think about what does it mean 
when we say that we share 99% of our genetics with chimpanzees. Right? It means some pretty important stuff about the fact that we evolved on this planet for millions of years. We're well suited to planet Earth. We are not a deleterious organism on the Earth. What is deleterious, what is detrimental, is the system that doesn't respect the inheritance of life. And that inheritance, and an inheritance of life is four and a half billion years of evolution, 4,000 varieties of plants that have been selectively bred by our ancestors to make our lives easier, and trees which have helped to make the planet a far more comfortable environment in, the, in, in a situation where we have a huge amount of solar flux constantly coming over this earth. We have to ask ourselves, who are our best allies at making it a comfortable ride? They are trees and polycultures and perennials. And yeah, that's why just pass that is the 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 not just <laughs> diversified. <laughs> 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 Thanks a so lot. It's also about creating an authentic <laughs> sorry, farming so that we begin to make use of trees, shrubs, berries, and the power that we have to manifest a new world. Of our own yeah, world. Yeah, our own yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, next up, we're going to have Jim Garrison. Uh, Jim is a main base farmer. Uh, he was named one of 20 World Visionaries by Eugene Reader in 2011. And he is the president of the Organic Seed Growers and Trade Association, which is the lead plaintiff in a class action lawsuit against Monsanto. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I'm just one farmer in a very, very large plaintiff group. We represent 83 plaintiffs. Among the plaintiffs, we have family farmers, we have independent seed companies, and we have farm organizations. And if you take the memberships of all the 83 plaintiffs, we represent over 300,000 people. Oh. And within that 300,000 people, we have many thousands of certified organic farmers who are relying upon you for your support of their product. They're relying upon us as seed growers to grow the best possible quality seed. But what we've learned that if the multinational corporations that control the biotech industry, if they contaminate our farms and our seed is contaminated, there's no way for organic farmers to be able to raise their crops. If it starts out contaminated, the crops they harvest are contaminated. We need to protect organic seed so that your right to clean food and for, to your right for a choice in the marketplace for something besides force-fed GMO crops, it has to be a reality. We have to make that right known and, and work for it. So late last winter, here in Manhattan, in federal court, lawyers working for us from the Public Patent Foundation, they filed a complaint against the Biotech Corporation, Monsanto. And we're, we've got two major goals out of this lawsuit. One, we have a situation now where family farmers, if we should be contaminated by GMO crops that come from Monsanto's side of the fence onto our fence, not only do we lose the value of that crop as a contaminated crop, but the way that Monsanto looks at it, they think that we are holding their technology and we didn't pay them royalty on it, so we are subject to patent infringement litigation because they've contaminated us and we, we may end up losing our farm through bankruptcy just yeah. trying to clear our names. We need protection from the courts so that biotech giant Monsanto cannot sue farmers that want no part of GMOs, that want no part of transgenic agriculture. Yeah. Part, of, part of regaining control of this country is to get the courts to work for the people. We yeah. have people that have gone to war and lost their lives and they didn't lose their lives trying to defend the rights of the corporation to yeah. keep us under their thumb. Yeah. We have to find the lawsuit. The second goal that we're after is that we have a patent lawyer, one of the best in the country, working for us and he has looked at patent law and he's found that Monsanto made a lot of mistakes when they filed their patents. And the fact is that the patents that the U.S. Patent Office have granted to Monsanto are invalid and we will prove that in court. And we will yeah. Now, of all the things that we can do, we need to work together. We need to let everyone in the country, in rural America and in urban America, know that we can't go on as it is. It's a system that's broke. Something that's broke when we're in the state of Maine, we say when it ain't broke, fix it. But the corollary of that is that when it is broke, you've got to get to fixing it. And that's why we're all here today. And I wanted you to know that rural America and American farmers stand behind you and that your courage here in establishing uh, the Occupy movement has 100% support in rural America. The farmers of America are behind you. today we're going to have a seed swap uh, and we brought some seed down from Maine um, uh, and we're going to be giving seed away for free and I think that ultimately as a seed farmer I think that uh, the seed form that we raise on our farm in Maine represents the ultimate defiance. The corporations would like yeah. us to run over. Plant seed. Planting seed is the ultimate defiance to big ag. Yeah. Yeah. So,
Thank you, Jim. And uh, for our last speaker, we're going to have Joel Sabor, who's a founding member of the Freedom Food Alliance and an advocate working on the alliance of black urban communities and black rural farmers. It looks like we're going to have some extra time, so after Joel speaks, I'm going to ask uh, all the speakers to come back and we can do questions. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, I'm Jalal, like you said, and uh, I just want to do a quick call and response. That's what we do in our community. I want to make sure everyone is here. So I'm going to say food. I want everyone to say power, right? All right. So food. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so food is very powerful. That's what I want to talk about. That's why I'm in this movement, because food is powerful in my community and it affects my community in a strong way. And I think a lot of folks here today, we talked about some of those um, external threats that we face every day. But I think the power is that we need to look at the solidarity that we have within our community. You know, we have rural communities, we have urban communities, and we need to harness that power. Um, I think a lot of things, when we, when we talk about food justice, we don't connect those issues that those grown folks go through and that the urban folks go through. A lot of times, yeah. the farmer in Iowa doesn't know that the kid in the hood is getting stopped and frisked every day. You know, we have to connect those issues around police brutality. No, because I go through that every day. My friend's father was just shot by a cop last week. Okay. So it's just like, this is what we need to talk about. I want to open this space up so we can create a safe space where we can really build solidarity and connect all these issues that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Because when I look out in this crowd, I don't really see my community. I want to make sure that for this movement to grow, that we see each other's community and understand those day-to-day -day struggles that I go through and that the farmer goes through trying to have a, a career. You know, I think I understand that Farmers can barely survive making a living, that they have to work a job outside of the farm to just survive, you know? So it's for, for what I do, I wanna make sure that farmers and the people in my community understand what they go through and what we go through. We wanna make sure that the foodies understand what the farm workers go through and that the CIW in Florida, that they're working on a farm and they can't get equal rights. So we wanna make sure that the food workers and the foodies understand where they go through. I think it's important that we build solidarity between these issues and making sure that, that when, we talk about, when we talk about land grabs, that it's not just land grabs in Sudan, but it's land grabs in the Bronx. Right. Yesterday, yesterday there was a, the Morning Glory Farm was, was, um, was arrested. People from Occupy Bronx just got arrested yesterday for trying to protect the Morning Glory Farm. So there's all the issues that we go through. We have to connect these issues. Occupy, the Bronx is trying to connect. Um, you know, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's the point. Y'all get the point. It's just that we go through different things. And for us to really succeed, we have to make sure that we understand and build stronger relationships and that we can we can uh, 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 come over these threats that we, we face when we're off street. So that's about it. Thank you. <laughs>
another round of applause for the amazing speakers that were just up here. to see all these powerful bodies cramped in this beautiful garden. Thank you to La Panza for allowing us to use their space. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of today. And thank you for being a part of the food justice movement. All the signs that you see in the back and on the sacks and all the patches, please take them as you make your way out, out, out of the, the garden um, on a non-violent march to Zuccotti Park. So please feel free to take them. Um, also, please do not leave and buy food because we have so much food waiting for us. Hair Pocket and Billy will thank you. Um, Ricardo, come el jardín. Take over the banner. Take oh, over. Here. Yeah. Just stay with me. What? No, no, the cops. No, don't worry about it. Stay with me. Very good.
let the drummers catch up. And then keep on singing, it's really nice. Just let the drummers catch up. We're gonna, we're gonna make a left up here, go through the door, okay? Okay. Just wait for me. Stay right there. All right, right through here. Yeah, wait for everybody catch up. Good. We're strung out. Let's go. because they're lagging way at the back. You can go real slow. Wait for everybody to catch up. We're about 
three, four blocks long, so we want to get it tighter. Tommy Fox. Yeah, I didn't hear here before. Yeah. I went when the organizer died. They had a memorial service here last oh, yeah. spring, I think, I remember. And I'm still filming it. That was about 11 or 12 months ago. Anytime. Okay, it's a lovely garden, I know. We're just waiting for everybody to patch it up. I know, it's very long, I know. I know, I know. I think we'll go down to Houston. I think. Uh, we'll go down to Houston. Are you going to take me to Houston? We're doing great. We're doing great.
from there. Stairs.
you on there too. Hey, hey, David, do I have permission to film you? Yes, you do. Thank all you. right, thank you so much. That was obtained two months later. <laughs> You're all over the place. <laughs> Okay. Okay. 